Thank you. May I have your attention? Before we begin this meeting, we ask that everybody silence your cell phones. The Fort Bend ISD Board of Trustee meeting is an open meeting for the public to observe the board conducting district business. Therefore, patrons may only address the board during the designated audience item section on the agenda. We also ask the members of the audience to be respectful of others, remain quiet during the meeting so that everyone's able to hear the proceedings. Thank you. Thank you, officer. The time is 6.01 p.m. and this meeting has a this meeting is hereby called to order. We have the presence of a quorum and the meeting has been duly called and the notice of the meeting has been posted for the time and matter required by law. I wanted to remind everyone this is an agenda review meeting. This is not a voting meeting. We are going to change the agenda um, from what you see. First up, we're going to talk about the elementary recommendations. We will try to stick to a 45 minute time frame. Um, we will then move on to the high school recommendations and we would like to stay within a 45 minute time frame there as well. We want to get our work done. We respect all of you for being here and um, look forward to getting on with the evening here. Dr. Dupree. Yes, sir. Thank you. Just as introduction, I'm going to ask you to um, ask the board to go back a few months. Last year when we did the facilities master planning process, at that point um, you approved several items that resulted in the November bond election that was very successful. The facilities master planning process also included the building of new schools and the opening of schools. One of the schools included is elementary 51. And so the first up as we get into elementary this evening, I'm going to ask Beth Martinez to introduce the idea to um, introduce the recommendations for zoning for that school. And then as we conclude the elementary, when we come back, I'll make a few more remarks as we get into the high school work. So I'll turn it over to Beth now to begin the discussion about the elementaries. Good evening. Thank you, Dr. Dupree. Good evening, board members. Um, this evening, as Dr. Dupree stated, we are here. We'll do a brief overview of the planning timeline thus far, um, talk a bit about the community engagement process, and provide specifics about the boundary recommendations. I ask for your grace slightly because we were um, poised to begin with the high school boundaries in this presentation, so I'll flip through and then um, and circle to the elementaries first, so if you'll just pardon that briefly. Um, I wanted to overview the timeline for you. You know, originally we had planned November through January, and then as we progressed through the engagement process, we, um, we began planning more towards a January horizon for elementary and a February horizon to bring the high school boundaries to everyone for discussion. And then, as I know you've received communication, as we all have, quite a bit of angst in the community, and as we were able to process through the feedback, through the engagement process and through the online survey, even after extending it through a couple of more days, um, we were able to kind of work through part of the holiday to, to continue that um, evaluation of the feedback in order to wrap the attendance boundary recommendation up for high school sooner than February to be able to address those concerns in the community and the angst in the community. Although, like you, we've, we've received some concerns about that and why did we make, make a decision so quickly to, to then bring them back to you all in January rather than February. But um, we wanted to explain that um, extension to the timeline and then bringing it back to January because we believe it's important to share the information and move forward so that there can be a more certain um, path moving forward. We did um, engage with the community um, through the online survey. I mentioned briefly that we extended that. It was supposed to close on the second. Um, we did get some requests from the community and from staff and board members to continue that survey a bit longer. And so we were able to close the survey on the fifth. And that slide just reviews for you the three opportunities we provided for those in-person information meetings. And then we provided the same amount of inform or the same information online for the community to review and provide feedback. And so with that, I'd like to move forward and share with you the recommendation that we're bringing forward for your consideration associated with implementing the boundaries for our 51st elementary school, Yusuf Sayi Elementary, which is located in the Aliana community. We received just over um, 
almost 3,000 um, responses to the survey, and of those, about 1,242 identified with a school which, which completed the survey when they identified with a particular school. 655 of these identified with the Madden community or with the Madden Elementary School, and the next highest represented Brazos Bend with 115 responses. And I want to reiterate something that I said, I think in the December board workshop, that um, although we're reporting numbers and um, in some instances majority of the feedback and phrases such as that, all of the feedback was critical. As you know, we reviewed every single piece of the information that came through the survey and through the Let's Talk um, and emails because we were looking for um, not only feedback on the options presented, but also um, different ideas or areas that we can investigate or, or um, look at uh, kind of informing the options that we had as we developed the recommendations to bring forward for you for consideration. This just gives you kind of a glimpse of, of the areas that did respond um, to the survey or that they identified with at certain schools in the area. So that's in your packet just as a quick visual overview. This is the current boundary as it stands today and, and it's um, you know tiny details but you have it in your packet so that you can see the as is and um, it lists the planning units, gives you some background on those attendance boundaries and just kind of a perspective as we move forward to look at the recommendation. This gives you an idea of the uh, current and projected enrollment and the utilization. And don't hone in so much on the numbers, but on the colors here. This is the as is, and if we were to do nothing with the attendance boundaries in these areas, this is the impetus for going to the community and, and planning forward. You see the red on the utilization charts and the blue. And the blue signifies campuses that are underutilized, so that'd be below 80%. And red signifies those that would be over 100%, and, we, and that is overutilized campuses. So it just kind of gives you a, a picture of what would happen if we don't move forward with any sort of change. So the re recommendation that we're bringing forward for you to consider for Yusuf Sa'i Elementary is a two-phase recommendation. We're recommending that in the fall of 2019, all of the students, and I just want to pause and say that this is narrative, but on the next slide, I'll be showing you the map associated with this, uh, with this information that all the Madden students that reside north of West Airport and east of Westmore Drive remain zoned to Madden Elementary, that students that are currently attending Madden and residing west of Westmore Drive and south of West Airport be zoned to Yusuf Sa'i Elementary School, and then the area that's identified that's under, uh, it's not developed yet, it is currently zoned to Neal Elementary, but it's located in the TDCJ uh, property, and it's currently zoned to Neal. We're suggesting or recommending that that be rezoned to Brazos Bend. PASA has indicated that that area of land could be developed as late as 2027-28. And then the recommendation includes a second phase for implementation in the fall of 2020. And this would be moving Chelsea Harbor, Stratford Park Estates, and land that is currently in Cullinan Park, and land that is part of the municipal airport to be zoned to Oyster Creek Elementary. It's currently zoned to Lakeview Elementary. And these maps show the current boundary on the left, and then the phase one changes, and the phase two changes. And I just want to draw your attention to the blue area there on the map is currently zoned to Madden, and we're recommending that it rezone to Elementary 51 or 51st Elementary uh, Yusuf Sa'i, and that um, that portion in the south there be rezoned from currently Neal to Brazos Bend. And then as you look at phase two, the green area, the outline of green, is currently all zoned to Oyster Creek, the unshaded and outlined. The part that is shaded and outlined, shaded green and outlined, is currently zoned to Lakeview. So we're showing that change in the second phase. The reason for this particular recommendation is that it minimizes impact on communities that were rezoned already when Madden Elementary was opened. It's most similar to option two. There were four options that were put forward to the community for feedback, and option two did receive the most support from the community through the online survey. This lays the groundwork for future, a future school to open in the area, and this would be our 56th recommended elementary school. And this is important because a lot of the feedback that we received emphasized uh, the concern that there's not long-range planning. And so, you know, as we look toward 
uh, filling the need at the moment and balancing. Sometimes it looks, it appears to be balancing enrollment. Now we, we need to make sure that we're looking out to that 10 year horizon and how are we moving forward and, and really focusing on the future so that we're causing the least amount of disruption possible as we move forward. And so we know that the moves that we're making in this recommendation line us out for that long-term growth in the area with the opening of Elementary 56, which would need to be funded in another bond. It's not included in this current bond. Um, this recommendation is, or this option is supported by the community because the, a lot of the feedback was that they really wanted to keep Harvest Green within Harvest Green. And this, I just want to point out as an example of future planning a while back. When we opened up our 49th elementary, which is Neal Elementary School, um, the area that was projected to be Harvest Green was not enough to fill Neal Elementary. And so we pulled from other areas to populate that campus. And now there are, there are students attending Neal who need an elementary within their area so that the um, kiddos that live in the Harvest Green area can attend their neighborhood school, which is Neal Elementary. This also allows for continued expansion in the bilingual program, which is currently at Holly Elementary. And we know it's a thriving program. And um, Holly, while a bit less utilized than some of the other campuses in the area, that is a growing and thriving program. And so we're able to provide that capacity there at Holly for the longer term. I would like to now um, welcome back Scott Leopold from Cooperative Strategies, and he's going to talk at a deeper level about the data associated with the projected enrollment, and then talk a little bit about future planning and how this particular recommendation aligns with board policy FC local. Thank you, Beth. Uh, this slide shows our data associated with the proposed recommendation phases one and two. Um, as you can see, um, everything that we have up here is based on live-in population. It does not include any students coming in or out for programs. And so, as you see this data for Holly, we show an enrollment of around between five and 600. Uh, that does not include the bilingual program that is currently at that school. I will show that on a subsequent slide. Uh, looking at this, our impacts immediate, mostly and immediately are to Madden Elementary. Uh, it brings it down from over 160% utilization down into just over 105%. And then once that facility would receive its addition in the 22-23 school year, it would be below 100%. Uh, elementary 51, Yusuf Saeed, would open up at 67% utilization and then increase to 83%, 98%. And then once we get to 22-23, it would reach 100%. And so this is more of a, a phased approach. You would need to have additional facilities coming online in order to get rid of more of those red numbers later in this plan. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, this shows uh, kind of more of a, a more of a real utilization. This shows us the what the utilization looks like with programs and portables in place. And so, if you look at Oakland Elementary, it's no longer red because it does have uh, many portables on its site, 264 seats in portables. And so, this is just to kind of give you a better idea of what it actually looks like, uh, you know, in in implementation with the portables that we have on site and the programs. Here's our policy alignment for Policy FC Local, uh, maintaining the neighborhood concept. Uh, this is a yes. This generally allows communities to remain intact. Uh, does it pre prevent and eliminate overcrowding? No. Uh, through the use of portables, Madden will continue to operate over 100% uh, through the planned opening of a building addition. Does it allow for future growth? Uh, a little yes and no, a little mixed. Uh, allows for the opening of uh, Yusuf Sayi Elementary below capacity to allow for growth and plans for the growth through the addition of another elementary school, Elementary 56, and also facility additions at Oakland Elementary and Patterson Elementary. Uh, does it keep students distances traveled by students as short as possible? Again, we've got a little bit of yes to no on this one. Uh, the area rezoned from Madden to, uh, some of the area that's rezoned from Madden to Yasaf Sayi is closer to Madden. Uh, and again, this, this is something that can be remedied through future planning and additional facilities. Uh, minimizing the need for student transportation. Uh, again, this is mixed. It does retain walkability uh, to Madden. Uh, students west of Westmore Drive are walkable to Madden, but will need to be bused to Yusuf Sayi until Elementary 56 can be open, where we will then look at balancing those boundaries further. Uh, allowing campuses to house students safely and provide adequate services to all students, yes. It reduces utilization, allowing for resources to be allocated more efficiently. Uh, it's just some additional considerations. Uh, the long-term plan includes a new school and classroom additions that are not currently funded. And so this is something that we'd have to talk about in the future in future bond programs. 
This plan does have as little disruption as possible. Uh, most of the areas in the recommended boundary for USAF CE were unoccupied when Madden was open. One exception would be uh, Old Orchard. Uh, implementation, Beth, did you want to talk about that for a minute? Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you. Implementation is aligned directly with policy FC local. And in policy, it states that the incoming kindergarten through fifth grade students would begin the new year in their new campus, um, but that incoming fifth graders would have, their current fourth graders would have the option of staying at the current campus whenever we do a boundary change at the elementary level. However, in that instance, transportation would not be provided and the campus would need to be below 100%, at or below 100% utilization so that we're not entering into an overutilized situation and, and allowing students to remain. But um, that's how we implement our elementary boundaries by allowing that to occur with the rising fifth graders. If they choose not to stay at their current campus, then of course they can move into the new newly zoned campus as a fifth grader. This is some additional feedback. Uh, the majority of survey responses mentioned the importance of keeping neighborhoods together. Uh, we heard a lot of keeping Aliana, Aliana neighborhoods in either Madden or Yusuf Sayi, keeping Harvest Green together at Neal. Uh, there was frequent mention of the desire for both Madden uh, and Yusuf Sayi to be able to feed into Austin High School. Uh, respondents indicated a preference for Harvest Green again to remain together at Neal, uh, keep students zoned to the campus closest to their homes. Uh, start the rezoning for new school in the fall of uh, 2020 instead of January 2020. Uh, include a solution for overcrowding at Oakland on the next available bond issue. And so, that's uh, again, that's just additional feedback that we had that aligned with this. Again, I think Beth covered this. This is the implementation piece. Uh, future planning, again, this is intended to address uh, some of the feedback that we got that, you know, we don't have a long-term plan that we're kind of doing Band-Aids as we go. And so this is just a, a concept that is subject to change to just show what we think this area could look like over the next uh, you know, five to 10 years. And so I have on this chart, I have elementary 56, which is shown uh, in the yellow outline. Uh, this would be in an area that would be north of West Belfort. And we feel that this would, this would address those neighborhoods that are kind of on the north side of the current Neal boundary. And so Waterview along with the northern portion of Aliana, north of West Belfort. And so in this particular scenario, it could feed to Crockett and Bush. Again, this is kind of out there. We just want to see, you know, what it looks like at this time. We would also align the area zone, zone to Oyster Creek, east of Old Richmond Road with Kempner High School to kind of clean up that feeder pattern. We don't want to have a Lakeview split anymore. Uh, once we do that, it would be possible to align Madden Elementary with the Austin feeder pattern. We also feel that we should look at aligning Holly with the Kempner feeder pattern to help us kind of unload that side of town so that we can uh, have more balanced utilization at the high school level. Uh, in order to make room in, in Crockett, we could look at aligning Mission West and Jordan Elementary Schools with Hodges Bend. And again, constructing a minimum of a 10 classroom addition on Oakland and a 10 classroom addition on Patterson. Uh, this is what the the data could look like associated with this future planning. And so I have uh, these new facilities and additions coming online at 2024-25 uh, just for, the, for this exercise. Should those be moved up f further in the bond program, they may happen earlier, but you can see this is kind of the solution where we get rid of the most red in these areas. And so this would help us balance this, this side of town for the long term. Now, if you have any questions on the elementary recommendation, we're happy to provide additional information. Mrs. James. Thank you very much for that presentation and, and going through um, all that information and for your thoughtful explanation, Mrs. Martinez. I appreciate that. Um, so, I have a lot of pieces of paper here, but. Um, one question I wrote down is uh, with regard to Madden Elementary School and the current status, is, the, is, is enrollment capped at Madden right now? And could you explain that just to briefly? Yes, ma'am. Enrollment has been capped at uh, Madden for the last two years, and it is capped. And the new students who move into the area are what we call overflow to Oyster Creek Elementary. And so they are, they're currently there, and there will be capacity in this recommendation at Oyster Creek 
because the rezoning in Oyster Creek will not is not recommended until that second phase, and that's purposeful to allow any students that may be attending Oyster Creek as an overflow from Madden Elementary to remain if they choose to do so. Okay, so that's a good point, so the students can have some consistency or there's a potential for that. So then in these numbers that are on these charts of utilization, do they include those students that are overflowed and, and might be attending Oyster Creek now, or do they not? Are, is it se are they separated out in some way? Are they? They are not included in the numbers that you see. The overflow. It's based on resident population. The only change that we have is that enrollment that we currently have at Holly. Okay, that's that's great. So some of this, some of the percentage points, might already be attending Oyster Creek, and they could be staying there. That's yes. correct. They are included as live-in attendants at Madden. Okay, and then for clarification, the addition at Bond, uh, the addition at Madden is in the 2018 bond, and there's an addition at Neal that's in a 2000 in the 2018 bond. Yes, ma'am, that is correct. Okay. So all of that, I think I understand all of the background now, and I guess I want to address a couple of um, questions. So if we look at the alignment with board policy FC local, um, the section that's west of Whichever, the, what's the name of the road? West, West, Westmore Drive. Met Westmore Drive, thank you. That's that curve that goes through? Yes. There, okay, so that's that road. So the section to the west of that that's now shaded in blue, those people are, some of them, I guess, are within walking distance of Madden. Um, and is that correct? And then your future plan to remedy that situation as you list in the FC local is, could you clarify that again? So to answer your question, the first question, yes, they are walkable to Madden. The kind of future planning is uh, that once we have elementary 56 online, they could return to Madden. Okay, and that would be because the numbers in the um, in the new ele in the current new elementary school would rise enough that 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 those kids that would fill that that space, and that's the knock-on effect then to needing the the next elementary school that's in that correct. region. Yes. Okay. Um, and so then, roughly, how many students are in that in that portion? I believe it's 121 as of this year. 121 students, okay, so. All right, and then my last question is, when I look at the utilization of Neil, uh, oops, oh. Yes, so on that chart, if we look at the utilization of Neil, it looks like it doesn't, uh, a, we're not addressing overutilization of Neil right now, which I understand to be because we want to kind of keep neighborhoods together. Um, but I'm not sure that the planned addition is enough. And so I guess what's the plan going forward and how are we addressing the overcrowding at Neil? Because sometimes we have to break neighborhoods up if the case in point, Madden Elementary, if the utilization is too much. So how, how are we, could you provide a little more explanation around that, please? Sure. So um, Oscar and I have kind of talked about the capacity that we've got at Neil. We feel that it's a larger building as far as, you know, we, we have some additional space in there that may not be currently counted. That's something that we could look at. Uh, additionally, we, we would have some excess capacity at Oyster Creek to be able to handle some additional students via overflow. Um, it would be possible to put portables on that building. I don't know if you wanted to add anything else, Oscar. Yes, in, a, in addition to uh, pre-designed space for an addition, 
there's also pre-designed space for placement of portables. Uh, and to clarify, uh, space is not counted. What we're saying is that we did not count pull-out spaces. Uh, you know, so there's there's quite a few rooms that could be utilized in the short term if we needed to go ahead and uh, gain a little bit of time before we make the next uh, boundary change. Okay, so m my response to that would be um, that I'm concerned if we're using pull-out spaces and some of those instructional spaces um, that are best for kids and, and trying to turn them into classrooms or, or change their utility because um, I think we've already determined as a group that that's important to the instructional process. Um, so that would be my first thought. Then my second thought is, is I start to get kind of nervous when we look at a 12, you know, with the addition that's 12, over 1,200 students. Um, that's really, really big for an elementary school. And we've already seen at Sullivan Elementary that when we're making those, uh, when those numbers are getting so, so high, it makes it difficult to manage all the, you know, all the pieces of an elementary school. So I'm not, you know, I also understand that sometimes the scenario is do nothing might be the first pass at this, but I'm just recognizing that this is a big number and with, to be at 105% capacity with an elementary school of 1,200 students, that means you're talking over 1,300 students at that elementary school. That's a really, really big number, I think, at an elementary school. So um, those are my thoughts at this point. Thank you. Mr. Rosenthal. Yes, sir. So I just wanted to clarify. Uh, so there's a piece in here that that takes students away from Neal to Brazos Bend. It's currently Texas Department of Criminal Justice okay, so land. Nobody and there, right? Nobody now. there, okay, and so PASA projects development around 2027, 20, 28 to okay. possibly then, begin. So the um, uh, which kind of helps in the long run with what. Greg was saying, um, the uh, when when are the additions again at, at Neil? Is that 2021-22? Yes, sir. We're under uh, design. We'll be bringing schematic design in February, so we're already under design for those. So when do you think those will have actually be built? What's the plan, at least? I have them opening in 21, 22. Right, that's what, I, that's what I was asking, okay. And so, based on those numbers, <clears throat> um, we're still at, even after that, we're still at 113, 117%, okay. Okay, and then, um, can you just remind me what the <coughs> rationale was to not clean up uh, that little piece um, go that 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 you want to go want to have go into Kempner, that little piece I guess is it Oyster Creek currently or Lakeview or that little yellow piece on your map? Yeah, sure. It's it's currently Lakeview. Okay, and I think it's something that we would we would address in future planning once we have the new Lakeview building open. Right. Okay. So it wouldn't make sense to do it now when you know you're going to be building. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's I don't think it's. Excuse me. I don't think it's Lakeview now, but correct. Okay. But it's something that we address in future planning once we kind of have a better idea of what that looks like in that area. But it's currently at Oyster Creek. Okay. Yeah. That's and it would I stay said. at Oyster Creek. Right. Okay. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Mrs. Tossin. Thank you, Mr. Burdine. So actually, m my question was this. Uh, same as Mr. Rosenthal's about Neil, just for clarification. So you have it, the additions coming online in 21-22, 
we have it rising over the next few years up to 131 percent it looks like so in your future planning go i mean do we are we addressing that yes okay can you show me show me that again please so it, it's up right now it would it would go from 117 percent down to 81 percent what what page is that on we, i have cameras in front it's, of the uh, slide number th 37. 37 thank you um okay okay pl go ahead yeah i just want to illustrate what the, the the area that we're kind of talking about so um, this is this is harvest green right here all this area north of uh, 99 is currently zoned all the way down to neil and so that was an area that was already developed when neil was opened and so again it's kind of that that kind of issue where we have where we open a school where we can get land and then when that develops we have to kind of rezone again and so that's kind of what this is okay okay thank you for that explanation that because that that i think that's the what i was looking at when mrs james was asking her questions so i was it was confusing how that was working okay um so i just wanted to add also i i am not in favor of using instructional pullout space for kids i mean we're going to have to do a better job of planning than that uh, we wrote those into the education specifications and if the ed specs are not being followed i know i as a board member am going to have a problem with that um, it's going to affect the way we deliver education to our children and that's the number one thing we do so um, it's very difficult to balance enrollment it's very difficult i know that to um, redraw these boundaries um, it affects people and their kids and I get that, but we cannot compromise the way that we deliver education to our children, and that's going to specifically compromise how we deliver education to um, children with disabilities, with dyslexia, with ADD, and any other host of, um, of issues, uh, gifted and talented. I mean, that was the whole point of all of that, was to be able to better deliver instruction and education to those children. So we i just we cannot fill up those spaces thank you thank you mrs toss and mr rice <clears throat> thank you mr burdeen well um you've answered my questions on the future planning for neil and so that it won't rise to 131 percent utilization it's going to go down but uh, thank you for that information i would like to uh, underscore what Mrs. Tossan said about the pullout spaces and take that into consideration as we worked very hard to get those uh, in the ed specs. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Mrs. Helliger? Just a quick question. I had similar um, questions as my other board members. I just want to point out um, for matting and future planning on page 37, we have Madden's utilization starting to starting to rise again. Um, did we address that? Um, did I miss that? What was the reason for that? So, it does it does go at a, up to 100 percent. But keep in mind that these live in numbers. They include everybody. So if there's students that are living in Madden that are going somewhere else for a special program like pre K or ELL, they're in that number. And again, this is, this is a projected number at this point. This does get updated every year. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's something that we continue to keep an eye on per policy every time we review enrollment. Um, it's 100, 101, and 103%. Um, it's not as alarming, I don't think, as the 131% that we had at Neil. And so it's something that we would keep an eye on. Yeah, I'm clear. I just want to make sure that we're not, what was the situation that's causing for the increase in to make sure that we're not missing something because we're showing it, projecting it at 100% now. That doesn't mean that it can't can't happen earlier. So I just wanted to understand what was the reason behind the increase after we relieved it. So that's why. I'm so it is it. it is the proposed boundary that I that I've kind of outlined here for the future planning, and so um, it's it's one of those situations where the we're trying to keep neighborhoods together, and this is just a. The, the boundary that I drew for, and if I if I drew it to 1464, mm -hmm. it would be at like 80%. And so I felt that it would probably be better to have it at 
you know, right at 100% to keep those communities together rather than splitting it off to have that number lower. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mrs. James. So my last question is to just clarify. So when we looking on page 37 again of the future planning projected utilizations, so to make that chart work, we need another element, we need another bond. Yes. We need another elementary school in that bond. And then we need, what else do we need? An addition at Oakland and an addition at Patterson. Okay. So another elementary school and two more classroom additions. Yes. And that's in that area. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mrs. James. So a lot of my questions have been answered to this point. Um, these numbers that we're seeing here are not um, including portables, correct? That is correct. Okay, so this is just standard utilization in the building? Yes. Okay. And then Mrs. James brought up a point earlier about having a 12 or 1300 person elementary school. And I, I don't know who would answer this question, but my question was is, can we do that with fidelity? Can we do that well? Are we already doing that well? Um, I mean, is that is that really a concern, or, or uh, can someone elaborate on that? And I'm going to be honest, uh, President Burdine, it's going to it's going to be dependent on uh, what principal you ask. Uh, there there are going to be some that some that are going to be uh, perfectly fine with it. They're going to have the manpower. They're going to feel that having a larger school provides uh, greater opportunities. And then you're going to have some that are going to say. You know, their preference is to have a, a, a school of a smaller scale. What I can tell you is that at Sullivan, although the numbers are large, uh, I have my own personal opinion about school size and how big it should be at the elementary. What I can tell you is that at this point in time, uh, the Riverstone community, they like having the community together. Uh, the principal's uh, doing the best that, that she can with her administration, and the teachers are doing the, the best that they can. So. Uh, although not the perfect scenario, uh, it's they're making it work at Sullivan. I know there's not an exactly right answer to that question, but it, it is doable and, and we can do it if if necessary. But any other questions or comments? All right. Well, thank you very much for this presentation. We will now be moving on to the high school recommendations. Once again, we're going to try to... Uh, um, be smart with our time and, and try to get this done in the next 45 minutes or so, uh, given that we can. So, Dr. Dupree. All right, thank you, Mr. President. Wanted to address two quick things. Um, Beth has addressed one of them, but the time frame for the high school, we did change it as we announced last week, and then we had previously planned to take the high school boundaries to the board in February. That decision was primarily based on the fact that we were having the survey open throughout the winter break and that we were going to be getting the information as we walked back in the door following the break. Um, when we got back, that all closed last Sunday on the, um, I guess, the 5th or 6th. And we immediately, I mean, the co cooperative strategies was working throughout the break analyzing data. So we had good data when we came back to work on the 7th. And based on the results that we read, it became clear what our path forward should be for the recommendation. Um, so we worked on it throughout the week, and later in the week we determined it might be better for the community and for the district overall to go ahead and bring this to the board this month since we had a good path forward and because there's so much um, consternation in the community about the high school boundaries, we wanted to be able to settle that down a little bit. So that's why we proceeded to go ahead and make the announcement. We shared the recommendation with the board Friday afternoon, and then a few hours after the board had time to see it and process it themselves, we then announced it publicly to allow the community the weekend to become aware of it and to respond to it and to review what was happening. And they certainly have done that, as you can tell from your email accounts. But that's why we, and we made the change when we did. Um, I would do, the other thing I want to point out is that um, as you discuss the information tonight, as you see this presentation, we are not including programming, um, the academies, any of those things in the high school recommendations because per policy, we have to do the utilization based on the capacities. So everything you're going to see does not include um, any academy structure. We, we want you to consider and approve boundaries without um, that consideration, and then we will come back to the board 
later on in the next several months and discuss academy placement should anything be um, need to change. We don't anticipate anything changing for next fall and related to academies, but we will be having more conversation about that throughout the coming semester about where academies would be placed over time in response to any approved boundaries. So with that in mind, I'm going to turn it over to Beth and she'll go ahead and get into the recommendations. Thank you, Dr. Dupree. Um, so this presentation of this recommendation will follow the similar framework um, from the elementary. And so with regard to community feedback around the high school options to balance enrollment in the southeast portion of the district, we received just over 5,600 responses to the survey and that answered the first question. And of those, 3,595 3, identified with schools uh, that they were affiliated with, which then um, indicated a complete survey. Of these, 1,423 identified with Elkins High School, with the next highest being representation from Quell Valley Middle School at 800 and Ridge Point High School at 768 responses. And this gives you that visual of the campuses uh, that the respondents affiliated with or identified with as they completed the survey. Um, this map is uh, the representation of the current boundary for each of the high schools in the area. And this is the data that shows if we were to make no changes, and so you can see there are three high schools that are falling below that 80%, and there's one, Ridge Point, that goes above the 100% utilization, and then Elkins in 2025-26 increases, over, well actually earlier than that, in 22-23 um, goes over 100% should we do nothing with boundaries? And so that was our initial charge, was to review the enrollment and projected enrollment in this area of the district and balance enrollment to the greatest extent possible while we plan forward for the 12th high school to come online. Our proposed recommendation is to move the current Schiff Elementary Zone to feed through Baines and into Hightower instead of Ridge Point. So the change would be at the high school level. That area is currently zoned, recently rezoned to attend Baines Middle School. So the difference would be to move from Ridge Point to Hightower for this campus. The portion of Heritage Rose that currently feeds into Bain, and that's an area off of um, or north of Texas 6, would feed through Baines into Hightower instead of Baines into Ridge Point. We're recommending that Parks Elementary continue to feed through Lake Olympia Middle School and into Willow Ridge instead of into Hightower as they currently are zoned. The area that's currently zoned to Palmer, which is north of Lake Olympia Parkway and east of Community Park to zone through McAuliffe to Willow Ridge instead of McAuliffe to Hightower. Lake O to Hightower. I'm sorry, did I read that wrong? Lake O to Hightower, I'm sorry, instead of um, to I just totally messed up. What did I say wrong? Am I reading so it, it, incorrectly? It, it's currently zoned to Palmer, Lake Olympia, and High Tower, and it would stay at Palmer and then feed to McAuliffe and then to Willow Ridge, and it may be impacted by rezoning of a future elementary school in that area anyway. Okay, thank you. Sorry. This shows you the current boundary and then the proposed changes to that boundary. Again, similar to the elementary school, you see that the outline in blue is the current Willow Ridge zone, and the new shaded blue is the recommendation of movement to Willow Ridge. And then the same holds true for the, uh, the outline in green. The unshaded portion is current high tower zone, and the shaded is the new portion moving to. And I'm gonna ask Scott, because you know this much better than I do, could you point out, these are small maps, could you point out some of the crossroads that um, could help kind of as a frame of reference? Okay, so this is six coming down here, 521. Uh, Siena Parkway kind of goes down the middle here. Fort Bend Toll Road, uh, Tramel, or Tamil Fresno right here. And as we, as we post these um, publicly, we'll be able to post them in a way that you can zoom in and see better. Um, and then through the implementation process, we'll be able to provide information that will be down to the, the address, but we can certainly post some maps that will go down to the street level and provide um, board members provide you a little bit more visually friendly map that you can see down to the street level. The reason for this recommendation or the rationale for the recommendation, it aligns most closely with option two that was provided to the community for feedback, which received um, the most um, support in the area. It does relieve Ridge Point while minimizing the impact to other boundaries in the area. 
This would keep Ridgepoint High School at or near its current levels through the opening of High School 12 in 2024-25. And as we planned for um, the bond, we received a lot of feedback through the, the passing of the bond, but then through this process about that high school coming online in 2024-25 and, and the expectation in the community around that timeline that was established. This also aligns with the facilities planning process to balance enrollment um, with Ridgepoint and Hightower, as well as to lay the groundwork and that foundation for the boundary for high school 12 to open in 2024-25. This increases utilization at Willow Ridge through new enrollment. Um, we know from the projections that enrollment at Marshall is projected to stay steady and increase slightly. However, enrollment at Willow Ridge is projected to decline over the long term. And so this adjustment to the boundary infuses new student enrollment within the Willow Ridge boundary and better utilizes Willow Ridge. Um, as a, It's projected to decline 45% over the next 10 years if we were not to add um, to the boundary there for Willow Ridge. And then we have extensive data that Scott will walk you through. Okay, and so this, this table shows us our our projected enrollment and utilization, uh, again, based on the live-in live -in enrollment and the design capacity. This does not include any portables or any transfers in and out for programs. And so Elkins stays unchanged. Uh, High Tower would go from 67 to, six, to uh, 69 to 73, uh, 76, and then it would be in the 80% 80, 80 range. And again, this, this does not include any enrollment from academies. Uh, Marshall would go from 54% up to 57%. Ridgepoint would go from 111%, 110, 108, 109, 108, and then it would hit 115% uh, the year before uh, High School 12 is uh, planned to open. And so it really maintains the current levels at Ridgepoint. Uh, Willow Ridge would go from 55 59, 63, uh, up into the 70s, kind of leveling off between 77 and 76 percent. Uh, looking at our socioeconomic balance between the schools, a uh, high tower would go from 57 percent economically disadvantaged to 48. Uh, Marshall would stay the same. Ridge Point would go from 22 percent to 16. Willow Ridge would go from 80 percent down to 75. Next slide I have on here, I have the same data, but I've tried to paint kind of more of a um, real picture of what it would look like. I have included the transfers in and transfers out based on the current academy levels, and I have also included the existing portables that are on each site in the capacity numbers. And so if we look at this, you can see that Elkins maintains, uh, you know, it stays under 100%, um, high tower. Uh, never goes over 100%. Uh, Marshall, again, uh, is unchanged. We show that increase up to 57%. Uh, Ridge Point, with its 600 seats that it has in portables, we don't show it exceeding 100% until 2526, which is beyond when we could have the additional high school open. Uh, Willow Ridge, again, increases up to uh, 80%, uh, and then down to 78%. Uh, overall, with, with the new high school capacity, we'd be, we would be between 81 and 90 percent once that new facility is open. I'm sorry, uh, I misspoke. We would be between 84 and 90 percent when that new facility would be open. And so again, the only difference between these two tables is, is we're including the transfers in and out and the temporary capacity in these, in these numbers. Moving on to policy, um, maintaining the neighborhood concept. Uh, this is mixed. This, this factor is a little bit less significant at the high school level, but attempts are made to try to keep community member or communities together when possible. Uh, prevent and eliminate overcrowding. Uh, the answer is simply no. Uh, we're going to have to continue to use portables uh, until we can get high school 12 online to, to help uh, serve the students in these facilities. Uh, does this allow for future growth? Yes, it allows for the opening of uh, High School 12 below capacity to allow for future growth. Uh, does it keep students, their distances traveled by students as short as possible? Uh, a little bit of yes, a little bit of no. Uh, areas moving from Ridge Point to High Tower are closer to High Tower. Areas moving from High Tower to Willow Ridge are closer to High, high Tower as well. Uh, 
Does this minimize the need for transportation? Uh, yes, we would not have to create any more routes. Uh, we also believe that the cost would stay about the same. Uh, does this allow campuses to house students safely and provide adequate services to all? Yes, through the use of portable buildings, well as continued management, the schools will continue to operate safely, providing adequate services to all students. Uh, some additional considerations, again, uh, Ridge Point is projected to remain over 100% and will continue to need portables. Uh, moving additional areas from Ridge Point to Hightower uh, was considered, but it would have resulted in, in um, splitting up another elementary school. Uh, Coil Valley and Lake Olympia communities are not impacted by these recommendations. However, uh, the districts, as the district's demographics continue to shift, it is likely that adjustments will be needed. Uh, some additional feedback, um, Quail Valley and Lake Olympia expressed a strong desire to remain at Elkins. Uh, Siena expressed a strong desire that Siena should stay and remain at Ridge Point to the fullest extent possible. Please hold your comments. Sorry, Scott. Um, Hightower expressed a strong desire to keep the Medical Academy at Hightower. Schiff expressed the desire to attend Elkins over Hightower. Parks expressed the desire to remain at Hightower. So there's a theme here, and I think it's important to see this, is that Nobody likes change, and so we saw that uh, evidently in the, in the data. Uh, there is an overall theme uh, on the importance of keeping communities together. Uh, Sienna respondents suggested that moving people uh, to the, uh, new to the community to Hightower while, the, while High School 12 is constructed, uh, utilize the portables at, at, High, or at Ridge Point, and again, overall, the, the responses indicated a desire to select a pan, plan that resulted in the least disruption uh, stakeholders indicated that High School 12 was promised in the bond and, and many suggested, had many suggestions on how to expedite building that campus. Uh, for implementation, I'll t hand it off to Beth. All right, again, um, in alignment with FC Local, incoming ninth graders, that we would implement the new boundaries with the incoming ninth graders, current eighth graders, <coughs> to attend the new attendance boundary. Incoming 10th, 11th, and 12th graders would have the opportunity to remain at their campus without transportation being provided at their current campus. And then we'll be updating administrative regu regulations internally to allow for inter-district transfers for incoming ninth grade students who are zoned to attend a new high school who may have an older sibling in 10th or 11th or 12th, so current 9th, 10th or 11th, zoned to the current campus so that they can remain at the currently zoned campus with their older sibling. Um, however, transportation would not be provided to them just as it would not be provided to the older student who, who decides that they want to remain at their current campus. For some future planning, uh, again, I want to reiterate this is subject to change. Uh, so for future planning here, I, I have drawn kind of a theoretical boundary for the 12th high school. Um, so Heritage Rose, uh, the portion of Heritage Rose that's currently feeding into Thornton would go to high school 12. Uh, Leonetti would split between high school 12 and Ridge Point just kind of based on, on where its geographical location is. Uh, Schiff would go or Schiff would go back to Ridge Point beginning in the 25-26 school year. Uh, Lake Olympia would go to High Tower, relieving Elkins. Because uh, if you remember back on our original sheet that we had there, we do show that overutilization at Elkins, uh, kind of in the out years of the projection. So it would go to High Tower to re relieve Elkins, and this would also align Palmer and make Palmer a 100% feeder into High Tower. And so uh, here's our data associated with this. Again, this does not include any, any academy placement. And so looking at this, uh, we, we bring high school 12 online in 24, 25. Uh, Elkins would start trending down as that change comes out. Uh, high tower would go from 81% uh, down to 83, uh, down into the 70s and then to 66%. Uh, Marshall remains unchanged. Uh, Ridge Point would begin to drop off. It would go from 115% down to 102, and then level out right at you know 98, 103 percent. Uh, Willow Ridge would remain unchanged. High School 12, the way it's drawn in this scenario, would open at 514 students, and then very quickly accelerate over four years to be at 1,816 students or 73 percent, with additional growth beyond the five years or the, beyond the 10 years of this projection. Uh, looking at the socioeconomics, um, Elkins, again, remains relatively unchanged. 
Uh, high tower would go from 58 to 53 percent. Uh, it is difficult to kind of calculate what these are because this is based on our current enrollment numbers. We know that they would change as these areas continue to develop. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, Ridgepoint would go from 22 percent to 10 percent. And again, based on the data that we have uh, with the students and where they're residing now, uh, the new high school would open at 61 percent economically disadvantaged. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Leopold. <clears throat> Mrs. Halliger, do you have any questions or comments? I just want to start off with a few questions. I'm still digesting this information and, you know, interested in some of the blown up maps and those kinds of things. So I'm, I'm just going to. They said they can't hear me. Okay. So I noticed when you started out, you said that we're not going to deal with. Uh, um, no, let me, not, let me not, not start there. Let me start with page 15. Based on these recommendations with schools going from, uh, especially like Winfield Lakes and Cambridge Lakes, which at the Cambridge Falls, which is right close to Hightower High School, you're saying that we don't need any new routes? How does that work? So I, are we looking for Michael? Um, I believe that they, they're currently all transported to Hightower, so we would not be adding any more routes to, to the transportation system. They're all transported. Okay. Okay. And the reason why we chose these two communities, they were, I mean, they are like, you can just throw a nickel and you can touch Hightower High School. Can you, based on some of the recommendations or some of the feedback from the community, which they had strong strong feedback to stay in that area, can you tell me why we recommending to move forward with a those two neighborhoods that are so close to High Tower to go to Willow Ridge? So in the original option two, mm -hmm. um, we had the medical academy and the digital media academy moving from High Tower to Willow Ridge and Marshall. Mm -hmm. And we had strong feedback that was kind of opposed to that. Mm -hmm. And you know, strong feedback around those programs staying where they are now. And so this was kind of the, the other piece of that is that we had to move one area out of High Tower, whether it was enrollment via program or boundary, to be able to make room for the students to keep Ridge Point at its current levels. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm a little confused then, or need clarity on the fact that when you started the presentation, you stated that we are not going to, uh, that we don't discuss academies um, because of our policy. However, does it not the academies and those things impact our utilization? I'm unclear because you just talked about <laughs> the academies. Yes, ma'am. Wait, so, hold on a second. <clears throat> I'm going to ask the audience to please hold your applause and your thoughts so we can continue on with our meeting. Thank okay. you. So, I mean, so this is this is really this is this is a question I need to understand because I thought even when we started this process, of the, I thought we looked at everything holistically. So mm -hmm. I'm just trying to understand why we're separating them. So this so so again I, I so as we had presented option two that had that piece of the academies moving. And based on you know some policy and feedback, we said, hey, let's look at leaving those in place. In order to leave those in place, we then have to do some additional boundary changes. And so that's why Parks was, was kind of selected. And also, there is a planned expansion of, I believe it's Chimney Rock, all the way through to McCard Road. Let me interject, Scott. The piece you're not mentioning, which I think was the bigger factor, Ms. Helliger, is that Willow Ridge is expected to decline to um, in, down into the what is it seventy? It goes it from fifty five percent to forty five percent. If we do not bring some new students into it, we cannot rely on. We're already going to have to build new programs in that school to increase enrollment. We're going to have to bring in new enrollment that's zoned to the school as well. That was the primary driver for that for that decision. Okay, I'll, I will yield to someone else, and then I'll come back later. Thank you. Mrs. Tossin. <clears throat> so 
So, Oscar, is there any way to accelerate High School 12? I know we've asked that before. Um, <clears throat> I know we don't necessarily know exactly where that land is yet. I mean, we kind of have an idea, but, um, uh, and I'm just questioning why we think it's going to take, and I know it's a, it's a big building, it's a high school, and these elementary schools are taking a year, so um, it's probably three times the size probably, right? Um, but is there any way that we can get that built, designed and built sooner? And the answer is yes. And what we're doing already is, you know, well, by being able to get all the architects on board, we are under contract and we will start design on that school immediately. Uh, we also will be updating you as far as land uh, in closed session. Okay. Okay, so that's good. Um, I don't know that that necessarily 